There are several aspects of stewardship that are absolutely important to a person or a population of people, a group of people who are identifying themselves as the jobless. I am not in any way looking down on these guys because I've been in that situation and now I see, in retrospect, with hindsight, I see some things that I should have been doing instead of, you know, identifying myself with that clique, with that group, with those statistics of being jobless. In the episodes in this new series, we have been discussing the power of a steward in eliminating the scourge of joblessness. Now, it does not necessarily mean that you're going to be paid when you become a steward tomorrow, but it's going to change a lot of things in terms of your identity that you actually do need at this moment in time. So listen up and stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. many times in these episodes I've quoted a man called uh, Carter Goodwin Woodson who wrote an incredible book called The Miseducation of the Negro. And this is what he said. He said that if you can control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you make a man feel that he is inferior, you will not have to compel him to accept an inferiority status, for he will seek it himself. If you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him out of the back door. He will go without being told. And if there is no back door, his very nature will demand one. And that's what I'm discussing in these episodes, especially when you're talking about joblessness. It is a reality. We accept it is a reality. But is it an identity? Is it an identity that you can be proud of? Is it an identity that you can actually wake up in the morning and put on? All right, and then you sleep with it, and then in the in the in the, the, the following day you wake up wake up with it again, and you put it on, and and so on until such a time that someone gives you a job. No, because if you do that, it's gonna do what Calvin, uh, what uh, Carter Goodwin uh, Woodson is talking about. That if you can control a man's thinking, if I can make you to think that you are jobless, I, I don't have to worry about your action. Your action follows your thinking. Your action follows your identity. When I determine what you shall think, I don't have to concern myself about what you shall do. Because if you if you think you are jobless, you're going to think you're useless. And if you think you're useless, you're going to do absolutely nothing. But if I determine, if I make you to determine that you are a steward, it flips. I don't have to worry about your actions. If I make you a steward, if I make you to understand that you are a steward, your psyche understands that you are a steward, your identity is settled to the fact that you are a steward, whether you're being paid for it or not, guess what's going to happen? Your actions will speak commensurate to that stewardship title or identity that you've taken up on yourself. And if, like Calvin, uh, like Carter Goodwin Woodson is saying, you see, if, if I make you to feel that you are accepted, and you believe that you are accepted. You seek acceptance. And if there is no acceptance, your very nature will demand the acceptance. You can flip it that way. 
And so when, when we're discussing the aspect of joblessness, we agree that it's a reality on the ground. But I'm going to the individual. I'm not going at the national level where I'm looking at the statistics. I'm saying, oh, X number of people came out of university this year and so on. X number of those are still looking for jobs. I am not looking at that from the national angle. I'm looking at you from the individual level. What are you doing about your identity in terms of that label of jobless? Are you saying that, you know, even us, I'll never forget this. There's a time I was in a panel discussing, someone was launching a book, I was discussing in a panel, and in this panel, in this room, there was a group of young men and women who were gathered and they were listening to us panels, a member of the panels discussing, and then there's this young man who dared stand up and say that, why can't you make this thing simple for us? Because for us, you know, uh, for us as young people, we don't read a lot. We don't, we aren't readers. Man, I would have eaten that man alive. But you see, that identity that he's imputing upon himself is making him to think the way he is thinking. So he had to flip that identity and look at himself as someone who reads, someone who, who researches, someone who is keen. And don't tell me that reading is for people who research a lot. No, it is for all of us because we've got to expand our minds. We've got to expand our systems. We've got to expand our capacities. How are we going to do that without reading? How are we going to do that without researching? How are we going to do that without masterminding? How are we going to do that without, you know, having mentors and having coaches around us? And so if, if, you, if you steep yourself in some kind of thinking and label, you're going to act commensurate to that label. So as an individual, I am saying... That instead of saying and, you know, allowing yourself to accept and make a mental, spiritual soul ascent to the fact that you are jobless, instead of doing that, which is disempowering, disenchanting, uninspiring, unmotivating, instead of doing that, why do you take, why don't you take the high road, the road less traveled? And call yourself a steward. And if you do call yourself a steward, there are seven aspects of stewardship that are going to come and they're going to bless you in your life. And at the end of the day, you're going to be a better person even in that situation where you do not have a job and yet you are a steward. The first thing you're going to do, you're going to become a servant. A servant is someone who is humble. They do not look for, you know, packs and, uh, you know, identity and the cameras are rolling and they have a microphone in their hands and, uh, you know, people are following them and so on. The servant is lowly. The servant can do anything. And this thing is not derogatory. Like I said in the previous, uh, previous episodes, we had the president of Uganda saying, I'm not your servant. Who told you I'm your servant? No, that is not the spirit. We're not saying that servants are lowly people and, you know, people who are of, of less privileges. It is not about positions. It is not about pedigree. It is about function as a human being. We are primarily servants as human beings. In fact, the highest level of existence for a human being is servanthood. So as a steward, you become a servant, which means you're not going to be choosing. You know, I, I want a job that uh, is uh, with the government. I remember this when I was interviewing some guy in Ghana, and uh, he said that I want a government job that uh, has uh, payment packs and has uh, retirement packages. It's a full-time job. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for any, any other kind of job. At that moment in time, there was, a, there was a president in Nigeria, the neighboring country, called Good Luck, Jonathan. So I asked the guy, do you know the first name of the president of Nigeria? And he said, uh, no. And I said, okay, you'll find out. That was me just telling him that I wish you good luck in that quest. Doesn't mean that it's not valid. It is valid and so on. But my point is simply this, that a servant will not be choosy, especially initially. A servant will make themselves a steward and they will do basically anything that they can. their hands can do, their mind can wrap itself against, and uh, anything that is seen on the ground that needs to be changed, they can change it. All right? They can get engaged, like we said. I'm going ahead of myself. The second thing is that this servant becomes, I mean, this steward becomes someone who is absolutely time conscious. That means that every single working day, every single minute of their working day is accounted for. It is projected. It is timed. It's calendared. Even if they are jobless. Try to do that and see how vast 
changes are going to happen into your life when you become someone who is absolutely time conscious processes normally happen within time the opportune time that you're looking for the time of breakthrough that you're looking for it is normally contributed to by the general things you do in the general time that you've been given the more you do the more you're making it easier for the opportune time to come the more you don't the more you're making it difficult for the opportune time to come. Opportune times, they normally say luck dances with whoever it is on the on the dance floor. You cannot have a hand, someone dance dance with you when you're in, in the bed. You have to be in the dance floor. And the third thing we discussed yesterday is that the servant or the steward is someone who is engaged. The someone who is jobless is someone who is disengaged. There is no growth in disengagement. There is no development in disengagement. There is no maturity in disengagement. But someone who is engaged at the heart level, at the hands level, at the head level, you know, those three levels, you engage at least you're doing something. If you there's nothing to do, you find something to do. Even if it's running just to up your body and make your body toned and so on and so forth. You do something. Get engaged. But today in the episode, I want us to discuss this thing. That if you are a servant, number five, is it number five? It is number four. You realize one thing. That you are existing to make the world a better place. You're not living for yourself. And I know this one sounds like it is so lofty. This is what people normally do when they are in their 60s. This is what people normally do when they are in the 70s, building foundations and, you know, they have built wealth and so on. So now they can become altruistic. You know, they can start uh, creating foundations and, and so on to help people. No, it starts from the get-go. The sole purpose of a steward is others, to be a blessing to other people. And it doesn't have to be money, it doesn't have to be a big corporation, a big foundation that you're doing. This is to me the essence of having a great life signature. In other words, the mindset of a steward is not selfish and self-centered. It is very easy, let me say this, it is very easy when you are jobless. And I know, I know I've been there, to think about you and only you. How can I? How will I? How will it go for me? Who can give me a job? Who can give me some money? Who can give me this? And you are thinking about you and you and you and you and you. And that's the default nature when you're going through a jobless situation. It is. That's why I'm saying that when you take up the identity of a steward, it changes. There's a moment in time that I was jobless and I remember a group of friends, we went into the national hospital. It's called Kenyatta National Hospital. And guess what? We went into the cancer ward of children. Ah, My friend, you don't want to be there. You don't want to wish your kid to be there. But just that act of looking out of myself and into the lives of others changes everything, changes your outlook in life. You realize that there are bigger problems in life than what you're facing. You realize that you, you have a body that can work. Someone is bedridden. You have a body that can work. You have a mind that can think. You have a spirit that is alive. You realize that there's so much going on for you, even in that quote-unquote jobless situation, than someone who is bedridden, terminally ill, and they are a kid. It changes you. So, as a steward... You become an outward looking person, looking at the betterment of other people, looking at what can I do with my body, what can I do with my mind, what can I do with my knowledge, what can I do with my expertise. I saw something on Facebook, I think, that says that you are looking down on yourself while all the while people are amazed at how talented you are, at how much opportunities you do have, at how much potential you do have. And that's the way it is in life. When you're going through, sometimes you just look at yourself and you look at the things you do not have, the places you never visited, the favors you do not have, the connections you do not have. You fail to understand that there is a balance, there is a, a seesaw when you're having a fulcrum, when you're having a pendulum, it swings both ends. There is a good end and there is a bad end. And the highest you swing, the, it shows you the extreme of both ends. There's good things going on in your life that can actually help you to contribute in someone else's betterment. 
a smile here, a smile there, contribution here, contribution there, sitting and listening, helping someone with the things that you have accumulated in your life, maybe your clothes, all right, visiting someone in hospital, praying for someone else. It changes totally everything. The focus, and I know this is a high road. This is not, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's simple and easy. I'm not saying it's like one, two, three. It is a high road. It's a, a road less traveled. But it is a road that is much more fulfilling, much more maturing, much more developmental in your spirit, in your body, in your mind than the road of sitting back and saying, I don't have this. I'm the one who needs help. Until you realize, you know, they normally say that uh, I was singing i was uh, sad that i did not have shoes until i met a man who did not have feet it's always someone who is going in a bad situation or in a worse situation than you are so don't think that you are the bottom of the bottom there's someone worse than yourself and even that someone worse than yourself there's something that they can normally do uh, uh, their stories being told of uh, the poor guys i think I, I read this in a missionary's book in ethiopia that those guys are givers the poor of the poor they are consummate givers as compared to the guys who do have things the guys who do have things holds I, i'll never forget the story of a billionaire i think a billionaire who lost something in a, in the market crash he lost his status as a billionaire by a billion i think or maybe a millionaire whatever it was he walked in front of a train and killed killed himself because he had lost a few millions can you believe that it was an inward looking of him himself thinking the things that he doesn't have the things that he has lost that made him lose hope on life at the end of the day and this is what normally happens when you're jobless you think you cannot help society you think you're useless that is a wrong thinking it's an illusionary thinking at the end of the day if you look carefully there's some things you can actually do if you look really carefully deeply there's some things you can do See, Jesus said that love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I get that. But look at it carefully. You love yourself so you can love your neighbor. Do you need a job to make the world a better place? Do you need a, do you, do you need a job to extend some help to your neighbor? Some visitation to your neighbor? Some smile to someone? Some give out uh, some of your clothes? you know that you do have some of the books that you've bought and you know give them out to helping kids in the community to read and and so on you can do something to make the world a better place even when you are jobless especially when you are jobless this mentality of waiting until we have money in the bank and in our phones and we have a car g class mercedes benz and we have a foundation and we have connections with the dalai lama before we can do something positive in the world is a wrong mentality we can do something positive in the world even when we have absolutely nothing in our pockets ask mother teresa and she will tell you that so in the episode tomorrow we're going to continue sharing about these aspects of being a steward that helps someone who is in the situation of joblessness but until then bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.